The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford, the ford of Jabba. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, "Why is it that you ask? Mo- Why is it that you ask my name?" And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, "For I have seen God face to face; yet my life is preserved." The sun rose upon him as he passed, and well, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Neil, could I ask you to do the prayer this morning for the preacher? You'll understand that one later, too. Hello. Hey, I just wanted to let you all know it's been great being here. Uh, I'm going to be moving uh, this week down to Miami for a new job. So uh, I been, feel like I've been blessed with this congregation and especially with uh, Pastor Terry. So let's give her a prayer before I go. Dear Father in heaven and all around us, please look after Terry, this, this church and her flock, and uh, continue to guide us in the, in the wonderful way she does with uh, say real to life stories uh, and inspiration from obviously the Old and New Testaments. Please uh, help the congregation to grow and uh, give me safe passage down to Miami. Amen. Amen. With thee all night I mean to stay and wrestle till the break of day. With thee all night I mean to stay and wrestle till the break of day. Can't sing anymore, but that you get that. So I were sang that song. Charles Wesley wrote about nineteen verses for that one, and you can find those on the page after it in your hymnal. It has the verses listed that he wrote. It's about Jacob wrestling with this man. Is it a man that he wrestles with though? That's the the question we ask ourselves as we read this story. Wrestling match. How many of you had to wrestle in high school or some other time in your life? How many of you were prevailed at your wrestling match? We had, yo, Neil did. Good for you. Oh, your older brother. Did he slam me around a little bit? Yeah. Gotcha, good. We had wrestling at Cockeysville junior high back in the day, and I always got just my face in the mat every time because I could not be mean to anybody else like that. My sister and I didn't wrestle. We just sort of threw things at each other from across the room, and we wanted to fight. Don't do that. Never do that. Don't do that. But um, it's really sort of a come-to-Jesus moment, isn't it, for Jacob? Because I just sort of very quickly did the story up here. But you know the story of Jacob and Esau, don't you? One tricks the other into giving up his birthright. And then he is tricked by his father-in-law Laban into marrying Leah first. Everybody says to me, how could you possibly marry the wrong woman? Well, in that culture in that time, there were not electric lights. And they were wearing veils and things like that. And he wakes up the next morning and goes, what happened to my wife? This is not who I took on. His father-in-law has tricked him because he was the trickster. And his name actually means usurper or trickster or He'll grab her because he tried to take his brother's birthright from him from the very beginning. So he marries the second wife. He finally gets to marry Rachel, the love of his life, works for his father-in-law, another 
stretches seven years, and then he gets married for her, and then he works longer, and he leaves a very wealthy man. And he understands that at some point his brother's going to come for him if he doesn't go home. And he goes home, and he sends his flocks ahead as a gift to his brother, but not sure his brother won't kill him, sends his wives and his children ahead so they're safe. And then he is left alone for his come to Jesus moment in the desert. Now, my sinner, my God to thee is also the song of Jacob. Um, Though like the wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest is stone. Still in my dreams I'd be nearer, my God, to thee. When Jacob has his vision of the angels going up and down on the ladder. We were climbing Jacob's ladder. You know that song, right? That's the other great song of this story. But here he is out there wrestling with God because it's a man. It says it's a man he wrestled with. What does it say later? He blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet my life is preserved. The ancient Jews thought if anyone ever came face to face with God, what would happen to them? Thought they'd die. They were so, so amazed. Even Moses goes up the mountain with God, and his face has changed forever to the point that he sort of glows, and they have to put a veil on him because everybody's like, what happened to him? But he says, even though he has seen God face to face, his life has been preserved. Interesting encounter they have, isn't it? Because they wrestle all night. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him in the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he gets the blessing of God. And then he says, what's your name? Jacob. For now long, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. And his 12 sons become the 12 tribes of Israel. And we know the rest of that story. I hope you know the rest of that story. But here he is wrestling, wrestling, wrestling with God all night long. And then he wants God's name, and God's name is a holy thing. Remember Moses saying, who shall I say sent me? Tell them I am who I am. I am is God's name. This should be enough. And he's seen God face to face, and his life is preserved. And he limps the rest of his life. What do we learn from this story about wrestling with God? Any of you ever wrestled with God over anything? I bet some of you have. This morning I asked Mike to pick the hymns because Lambert was not here for the early service. Lambert's taken off after this service. He's going to Ireland, which is a joy for him and a concern for us that he may not come back. Some little glass grabs him over there and holds on to him or something like that. We don't know what might happen to you over there, Lambert. But um, here we have Jacob all night wrestling with God. And Mike this morning picked the hymn, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, the modern version of that that we sang at 9.30. John Newton is someone who wrestled with God. What do you know about John Newton, the writer of the story? I've told you before, the writer of Amazing Grace. You know what he did before he became a poor country preacher, don't you? He's a captain of a slaving ship in the British slave trade. And God said to him, you can't do that anymore. I don't want my people enslaved. It took him a few years, but finally he quit captaining the slave ship and became a country preacher. Died very poor, but leaving us with this beautiful hymn of our faith. Jesus wrestled with God, didn't he, at one point, the night before he died, after giving himself to the disciples and the body and the blood, the sacrament of Holy Communion for us now. He goes into the garden, and what did he pray? If possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours. That's a wrestling match with God. I've shared my own wrestling matches with you, with God. One, when I went into ministry for the first time, when I spent three years trying to talk myself out of it. Second, when I went to California in 1999 on a Sabbath rest, which we're supposed to take every seven years. I've taken one, and that was 24 years ago. But... um. Sabbath rest, where I asked God to take my call for me because I was so tired, so worn down. I would walk to the beach every day. I lost a lot of weight because I walked through that thick sand out there every day. And then I said to God one day, I need a sign if you want me in the ministry. And these two little girls ran out literally at that moment from a tent on the beach. They were worshiping here today. We want you to come worship with us. Grab me by my hands and pull me under the tent. 
one out of the ten looking up to the sky, like, okay, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. You are not done with me yet. But if you want me in the ministry, i got to have some change in my life. And I went home, and the next day I met my husband. God works in very strange and mysterious ways sometimes. Anybody here willing to share a time when you've wrestled with God? Anybody here willing to say that you have wrestled with God? You can close your eyes and raise your hand if you want so nobody else can see you. I have one person here is brave saying, yeah, I wrestled with God. It's okay to wrestle with God because you know what happens when you wrestle with God? God will always prevail and God will always leave you. Maybe you limp in a little bit, but you're not going to be killed. God's not going to slam your face into the pavement. God is not going to take advantage of you. God is not going to hurt you in any st- sense of the imagination, but God is going to reveal himself to you and let you know what God is trying to get through to you. Pretty scary stuff when you look at Jacob. I love the story of Jacob, though, because I feel like he was a great ancestor in faith because he was a mess. Do you think Jacob was a mess? He wasn't someone to look up to and admire. He cheated his brother out of his birthright. For a bowl of lentil soup, he's like, I'll give you this soup, but give me your birthright. And he lies, flat out lies to his father and says, I'm your favorite, I'm Esau, give me your blessing. And he takes the blessing from him. Not an admirable guy. And yet, because God had promised his grandfather, Abraham, that the line would continue through him, God is faithful to God's word. God would never abandon him at all. There are people wrestling whether they should stay in the United Methodist Church now on both sides of the issue of having to deal with LGBTQ plus people. There are people who feel like they have to leave if the church becomes more open and accepting of people who are homosexual or transgender. There are also people who are leaving because they think we're too hard on those folks. We need to welcome everybody who comes to us. You've had people leave Epworth because of both sides of that issue. I'm sure it was hard for Elaine to decide it was time to go, but she wants to be with her daughter, and I understand that fully. Because it's just been almost two years since we found Elaine on the floor up here after she had her stroke and then went through breast cancer and now wants to spend the rest of her life with her daughter. And if I got to listen to Emily sing every week, I'd be closer to God too. Amen? Amen. We'll still be joined in heart with them. They're not going to just abandon us. They're going to be back to visit. I know that. But Elaine's going to sing in that choir, and Elaine's voice is back, which is a testimony to the goodness of our God. So Elaine wasn't sure she would ever be able to sing again or play the piano again, and she's doing both now. Maybe not to the level she was before with playing the piano, but her voice sounded great today. Amen? Amen. The rest of us will keep wrestling. Sometimes we'll wrestle against each other, which is not a very good thing to do at all. Sometimes we'll wrestle with God, won't we? God will always see us through. God will always raise us up to new life because that's who Christ is. And as we come this morning, we're going to come up and we're going to share in the body and blood of Jesus Christ which always reminds me why I said yes to God in the first place and how God has moved in my life through the years. So whether you're wrestling right now or whether you wrestled in the past or whether you had a wrestling match in your future, you know that God will never leave you alone. You might limp a little bit, but God will never leave you alone. And the same God who saw Jesus through the cross and the resurrection will be with you no matter what you face in this world or the next. So let us come now to sing this great song of our faith and we'll share in the blood and the body of Jesus Christ our Lord. Then with my waking thoughts, bright with thy praise, out of thy stony griefs, Bethel, I'll raise. So by my woe shall be nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee. Please stand and join in singing. <laughs> 